Hi everyone, how are you today? So I've actually decided to do something a little bit different on my channel today. Um, I'm actually going to be chatting about conspiracy theories while I do my makeup. So the conspiracy theory I've chosen for today's video is Denver Airport. So this is actually one of my favourite ones. I've read up quite a lot about it um, and I find it really, really interesting and I hope you do too. So I'm just going to get into my makeup. Everything that I use I will list in the description. So if you do want to check that out below, you can. Um, and I'll just get right into it. So Denver Airport is um, located in Denver in Colorado um, it is actually the second largest airport in the US at 33,000 acres um, and it is the second biggest airport in the world after Saudi Arabia. Um, so before this airport was even built there was actually a lot of confusion as to why it was being built. Um, this is because there's actually an airport only 25 miles away um, which in the area that it was located in it was actually easier to get to the airport from the city than this new Denver airport. So this airport actually took 16 months longer than expected to build um, and it went two billion dollars over budget as well so people were starting to wonder you know like why so much money was going into this and why it was taking so much longer whenever there was a pretty full functioning airport 25 miles away from it which was easier to get to. So all of this led to a lot of confusion by the locals as to why the airport was actually being built in the first place. So um, I'll start off with the artwork inside the airport. So for example in the baggage claim area you have a lot of gargoyles that look like they're coming out of suitcases. Um, and they're not happy gargoyles, they're very actually scary looking. Um, so you have those in the baggage claim area, so, so it's not very welcoming. You'd kind of think if you're going to an airport, you know you want to be welcomed, you want to be happy. Um, you don't really want to be coming across gargoyles that look really, really scary. <laughs> um, so that's the first piece of artwork. It's not actually the worst out of them all. We will get into those in a wee second. So the first thing that most people notice is there's a big blue Mustang sculpture. Um, right at the exit and the entrance of the airport so it's pretty much the first thing that you see if you are going into this airport so the locals have actually nicknamed this statue Blucifer because it's a big blue Mustang um, it's actually got red glowing eyes as well and they glow day and night um, so again it's just not something that you really want to see whenever you're coming into an airport so this sculpture is a 32 foot sculpture which is created by an artist called Luis Jimenez, Jimenez, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, um, but that is the artist that actually designed and created this sculpture. Um, so most of this artist's work is actually made from fiberglass, so this sculpture was made from fiberglass as well. Um, and if you do look at some of his other artwork, it is very, very similar in the sense of it's all kind of a little bit creepy and strange. It is also speculated that this statue actually represents the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Um, the fourth one specifically representing death, so that is a little bit suspicious and weird. Um, but that is apparently what it represents, at least that's what the locals and conspiracy theorists believe. And sadly, in 2006, whenever this artist, Lewis, whenever he was actually working on this statue, um, I don't think the whole thing, but part of it fell as he was making this statue. Um, it fell on his leg and it actually severed an artery in his leg, which ultimately led in his death. Um, so again, you'd kind of think there, if that's happening, you know, if he's died by making the sculpture, you kind of wouldn't really want to have it in the airport. But this sculpture ended up being finished by his son um, and it ended up going over budget by about 50%. I'm pretty sure they ended up spending about $650,000 on this statue. So that is the main concern um, for the locals and everyone kind of passing by. It's just a very, very strange sculpture and the eyes are like the most concerning thing. They just glow bright red day and night and they're just very, very creepy in my opinion anyway. So there are four murals located in this airport, each of which I must say are very, very weird. Um, so the first one is, it's actually titled In Peace and Harmony with Nature and in this mural you can see there's children and civilians running away from what looks like a forest fire um, and they're holding these glass boxes and in these glass boxes there are endangered and extinct species um, of all different kinds of animals so they're running away from this forest fire and um, you know they all look really concerned 
um, and in the foreground of this mural you actually have three caskets each of which have a woman in them um, so it, it's just very it's not something you want to see in an airport you know it's not happy and upbeat and uplifting it's just very very strange um, and it, it's not something I would want to see in an airport anyway um, I do actually have some staining from eyeshadow I did yesterday and it's pink and it's all over my eyelids so I'm just covering that now. So there are four murals in this airport, they're split into two and two of them are on one side of the airport and two of them are on the other side. So um, these murals kind of go hand in hand with each other so for example that first one that I just explained there is like a second part to it. So the second part to this mural shows you children from all around the world and they look like they're maybe dancing, you know, having a bit of fun, they're showing joy. Um, so it just goes hand in hand where the artist's depiction is that the first one shows great destruction and um, humanity not knowing what to do, running away from everything. Whereas the second one shows humanity kind of coming together and showing their appreciation for nature and everything like that. Still think it's creepy, but at least they added kind of like a nicer note. <laughs> so on the other side of the airport you have the other two murals and these also are like a two sided story. So in the first mural you actually have what looks like to be a soldier wearing a gas mask. Um, and he has a big big rifle in his hand and in the other hand he actually has a sword. Um, and this sword, as you can see, it's it looks like it's kind of impaling or stabbing um, a dove. And you can see as well in the background of this soldier, you can see kind of like a rundown town or city. Um, just beneath his feet as well, you can see what looks like um, sleeping children. And right beside him as well, what looks to be a really sad mother um, holding a dead baby in her hands so that's also very interesting to see in an airport um, so that is the first half of the mural so as with the last one um, this mural comes in two parts as well so the second part of this mural is like a slightly happier and uh, more joyful depiction so in this second mural you can see children coming together and joining together from all over the world um, there's a lot of rainbows, it just depicts happiness um, and a lot of joy and it just looks like children are having fun, you know, finally happy. Um, and just at the very, very bottom of this mural as well, you can actually see the soldier and he looks like he's dead at this point. Um, you can see the soldier, there's two doves sitting peacefully on top of him and the children just right in front of him are actually holding a sword. So it kind of just shows as if everybody's conquered this soldier finally and they can all go back to being happy um, now that he's dead. So that is the murals that this airport has to offer. To be honest, I don't think it's appropriate for an airport. Um, if you're flying into somewhere or even if you're leaving, you're flying off on your holidays or something like that, it's not really something you want to see. If I was in an, air in an airport, I mean, I'd want to see, you know, happy pictures, happy murals, um, maybe something to do with holidays, not something that looks post-apocalyptic or anything to do with soldiers or anything like that. So conspiracy theorists believe that all of these murals and bits of artwork are actually linked to a secret Masonic post-apocalyptic shelter or like a bunker. Um, so people are just believing that there's something a little bit bigger going on than just a bit of crappy artwork. So there's actually a dedication stone located in this airport. It's located at the south entrance of the airport. Um, and this, to be honest, this dedication stone is just completely strange in my opinion. So to a lot of people, conspiracy theorists or locals, this dedication stone actually proves to them um, that this airport is run or operated by either the Freemasons or the New World Order. Um, so the New World Order, what it is, is it's pretty much like a secret society, secret group um, that kind of acts like a government and their overall like final intention is to take over the world and just rule over everyone. Whereas the Freemasons are like an ancient secret society, it's just like a secret group um, and there are actually a lot of conspiracy theories linked to the Freemasons but that is because no one really knows what's going on. 
um, what the Freemasons meetings are about or anything like that. So that is why a lot of conspiracy theories are linked to the Freemasons as well. So this dedication stone which is located in the airport um, is actually built over a time capsule. So this time capsule was actually sealed during the dedication of the airport in 1994 um, and it's not to be opened again until 2094. Um, I was born in 2000 so I don't think I'll be alive for that but I am really really curious to see um, a lot of people, now this one I don't really find as believable but people believe that um, with the new world order and everything like that that this is when their whole overcoming of the world and everything like that will begin as 2094. So on this dedication plaque there is actually like a shout out to the new world airport commission. Now if you do try and google this, if you do search it or anything, it actually looks like there's just nothing that comes up. So it's very very strange because if, you know, the donations are coming in from this commission, you should technically be able to find it online. Um, but nothing comes up, the only link is obviously to Denver Airport with all these conspiracy theories. Um, but nothing actually legit comes up as to who this commission is. Um, you know, how much donations they made or any kind of information like that. So another popular belief as well is um, the date on the stone is March 19th 1994 so if you actually add up all of the numbers of that date um, you get number 33. Um, now the number 33 in Freemasonry actually means it's like the highest level, it's perfection in their eyes. Um, it's the highest level that you can get to in Freemasonry um, so that is why people find it strange just because you have this date you have the numbers that add up to 33 and then you just have the Freemasons logo slapped right on that dedication stone so it's um, it's just making people question if there is any kind of bigger reason as to why this airport was built um, I don't know about you but the closest airport to me is Belfast Airport. Whenever you go into Belfast Airport you don't see big murals of soldiers and you know Freemasonry logos everything like that so and I'm sure it's like that for most people you just don't see stuff like that whenever you go into an airport. A lot of people visit airports you know millions of people pass through airports in a year um, especially with that airport considering it is the biggest in the US you just don't expect to see stuff like that. Um, and in my opinion, I think it's just a wee bit strange, all of this stuff. Um, I'm not saying I believe every single part or every single conspiracy theory about this airport, but some of these things are definitely a wee bit strange um, and a little bit suspicious if you ask me. So another thing which is leading a lot of the locals and a lot of the public to more conspiracy theories about this airport is the fact that there is a huge network of underground tunnels underneath this airport and um, some people call them tunnels some people call them bunkers apparently it's a mix of both um, but it's just very very strange that is why people were wondering why it's taken the extra 16 months um, for this actual airport to be built and why it's going two billion dollars over budget and the size of all of these underground tunnels and areas is actually 470,000 square feet which is huge may I just add <laughs> it's a huge huge area so one of the conspiracy theories surrounding this huge underground area is the fact that it is actually linked to all of the murals that you see in the airport, in the actual airport um, main building. So I've been trying to say apocalyptic for like the past five minutes, but here's my next point. So there are a lot of conspiracy theories surrounding um, these underground facilities and bunkers and they're mainly linked to the fact that if you look back at the murals, um, you can see all of these post-apocalyptic images, <laughs> very proud of myself for that one. Um, you can see all of these kind of images, murals, and it's just depicting that the New World Order, how they are going to um, start this whole new government and this whole new world and rule it, is that they are actually going to host a mass, or maybe not a mass, but a genocide and that you know the global elite um, the leaders of these groups everything like that will be the ones to be staying in these underground bunkers um, and they will be the ones that will be protected from all of this whereas it's given nature and the earth kind of like a reset 
um, but that is where these people will be staying safe. So the airport does claim that all of these tunnels are being used for the likes of baggage claim but a lot of locals and people that have passed through the airport have actually claimed that the baggage claim area and the whole process of it really isn't that great, it's just not working. Things are going really really slow and people are waiting for their baggage for a long time. So it's just not making sense as to why they would spend so much on this baggage claim facility um, for it to not actually be fully functional in the end up. The airport themselves do actually kind of make fun of all these conspiracy theories. They kind of try and make light of the situation. Um, they are actually due to start renovations in 2021 as well which is going to cost between 650 million to 770 million, which is just crazy. So people are, are still questioning why so much money is being pumped into this airport. Me, obviously, I don't know how much airports cost, but to me, even that seems like quite a big amount for an airport. Um, especially when, if you look at different airports around the world, there's one in Hong Kong, it didn't take nearly as much money to build that and it is a similar size of the Denver airport. So another reason that the airport has given for all of these tunnels and underground bunkers and everything like that um, is it's just an easier way for the employees to get around the airport from one side to the other without having to weave through the public in the actual main airport building. So they have given kind of valid reasons for everything that's going on but it still doesn't really in my opinion explain why the underground area is as big as it is. So lastly, the strangest thing about the airport and another conspiracy theory is the actual layout and the setup of the runways. So obviously in the middle of the airport you have the actual airport building, you have the communications towers, everything like that. Um, but it's the actual setup of the runways. Um, they're set up basically in the shape of a swastika. Um, which obviously their reason for it is because it just means that with the amount of traffic that they get it's just easier for planes to come in and out no matter what direction they're going in, no matter what the weather's like as well. Um, and they did explain that they believe the shape of the runways is more of a pinwheel than a swastika. Um, but if you're looking, if you're say you're flying into the airport or something like that and you see the layout of the runways it is a little bit concerning. Um, because it's very easy to see that it does just look like the shape of a swastika. So I'd just say in general if you're say you're flying into the airport you know you see this big ass swastika on the ground made out of the runways you'd be concerned about that probably. Um, going through the baggage claim seeing all these scary gargoyles everywhere that's not exactly something welcoming in an airport as well. You go through further and you see all these murals, soldiers, people running away from forest fires. It's just not something you really expect or want to see in an airport. Um, and then obviously you have the dedication stone as well with the Freemasonry logo. And as soon as you come out of the airport you see this big blue Mustang with fiery red eyes that glow. Um, and they glow day and night as well so it's creepy no matter what time of day it is. Overall, it's just not a nice and welcoming experience. Whenever you're coming in through this airport, you're seeing all these weird and strange things um, and it just doesn't really add up. So that isn't all the conspiracy theories surrounding Denver Airport, but it is most of them. It's the ones that people focus on the most. Um, I find this conspiracy theory really, really interesting. There's just so many different points to it and it just really makes you think. I would love to know your input as well in the comments. So if you let me know what you think, if you think this is all just a pile of rubbish in the airport, like it was just all a coincidence, let me know. Or if you think there is a bigger meaning behind all this, I would love to know your input as well. Um, for me, obviously, I do believe some of it. I don't believe the extent to someone said that there's aliens living in these bunkers underground. I don't really believe that, but I do believe it to a certain extent um, that it all just doesn't add up all the Freemasonry logos. And with the murals as well, you know, they have to be approved by a lot of people before they're put in an airport as well. So it's just strange to see stuff like that in an airport. Um, and I don't think it's the appropriate place for stuff like that, especially the blue Mustang as well, the blue Blucifer. <laughs> um, it's just a very demonic kind of looking statue, I don't think it belongs in an airport. I think if you want to see something like that, it should maybe be in an art gallery. It's just not something people want to see whenever they're coming into an airport or even exit it out. It's just not a really, really nice sight to see. 
Um, but that is that, I hope you enjoyed. Um, I did really enjoy talking about this. It was a little bit more difficult doing my makeup and talking at the same time than I expected. Um, but I will definitely be back with more. If you did enjoy what you saw, please leave a like, subscribe, put your notifications on, that helps out a lot as well. And I will dedicate a special day in the week for these conspiracy videos as well. And I obviously will have alongside that just normal makeup videos or like a chatty get ready with me or something like that. But if you enjoyed, please come back for the next one and we can chat about something really strange and suspicious again because it's something that I really love and it's something that I love researching as well. So, so thank you for tuning in to this one and I hope to see you again. Bye!